YouTube Oz it going. The NFL draft is back. Today is the day. I'm here with my final, final mock draft, we'll call it. Went a little bold, but the NFL draft always ends up bold. Everyone's mock drafts end up wrong. I love it. Here for the surprises. Join us live tonight. We'll be live streaming. Other guys will be with me with our reactions. Always a good time. And we'll have plenty of content uh, after tonight and throughout the rest of the draft. Uh, but Caleb Williams, I got going to the Bears first First overall. It would be a shocker if it was anything else. Uh, fully expecting Jaden Daniels to go to the Commanders at two. If I was the GM, I would take Drake May. But I'm predicting that they'll take Jaden Daniels. I think everyone's kind of, most people are in the same boat. Like predicting Jaden Daniels probably should be Drake May because he has a lot more upside. Uh, but Daniels is a pretty solid quarterback. Three is where it gets interesting. I'm going to stick with the Patriots sticking here and taking Drake May. Mainly because how could you not? How could you not take Drake May if he falls in your lap here? But what's weird is that they're open to trade. Like, they're listening to calls. They will listen to calls down to the clock at zero, apparently. So, usually that t usually that tells me that team, like, they're kind of looking to trade back. Like, they're good with it. So, if you're good with trading back, but then you ultimately decide to just settle for a quarterback, or I guess we'll just take that guy at three. It's a little interesting. So, that makes me want to have a trade. Like with the Vikings or Giants, I, I strongly consider both. They're both really trying to get up to Drake May. But it also could be a scenario where the Patriots maybe are willing to trade if someone just offers something ridiculous. Like, you know, they would to trade back, they would need to win in the value department, but they want even, they want to like win and some, and then maybe the, it'll be enough for them to do it. So. I think they end up staying put, but both or one of those teams, you know, could end up getting really, really, really desperate and trading the house for Drake May. We will see. That's where the fun should start. Pick four. I know there's talk about the Cardinals trading back. I, I don't. I think it's got to be Marvin Harrison Jr. But what we will see. Uh, I think there's a scenario where they trade back and trade back up to five with the Chargers pick. We've talked about that before, but I'm counting this, uh, counting on this being Marvin Harrison Jr. at pick four. Um, it's got to be the pick here. And five is where I went a little bold. I actually have the New York Jets trading up, and I'm surprised that no one talks about this. No one has it, so maybe it's just not a thing. So I want my first surprise here. I can definitely see this. The Jets are in win-now mode. They want to go get the best pieces. They need an offense lineman for the future, and they have, you know, because they have older guys at tackle, um, one-year deals, durability concerns. So go up and get the best tackle in the class. The Chargers are looking to trade back as well. So, again, this isn't being talked about at all, so I went a little bold with this one. Just kind of a feeling I have right now. The, the Jets go up and get Joe Alt. Um, they do give up a next year first. They get a next year fifth back in return, a swap of five and ten. So just something I'm feeling right now, but I'm aware it's pretty bold. Six, uh, the Giants go Rome Adunze, and that might seem a little bold to people like them picking Adunze over Neighbors or Adunze over McCarthy. McCarthy's situation's interesting because McCarthy thinks the Giants are going to draft him. He actually came out and said that. Like, he, if he had to predict, he's going to the Giants. So that makes you want to mock McCarthy there. But it's a lot of people, like, you know, the top NFL draft analysts that really do not believe that. And that's kind of what my thoughts were this whole process. I just don't see the Giants taking McCarthy. So. We'll see. I think they're going to prefer Adunze. It's just that outside receiver that they badly they badly needed. Um, but they, you know, I think their number one option is go up and get May. So we'll see. Pick seven. Titans go Malik Neighbors. I, I really think the Titans are they're almost quite simple. Like if Alt is there, I think they're taking Alt. If if he's gone, I think Neighbors is their next choice. It could be Latham, uh, but I'd say Latham's probably their third choice. Could flip Neighbors and Latham, and Adunze probably be next. Um, they could trade down a little bit. I, it's just going to be a surprise if they take someone, and who knows, it could happen, but other than the guys I have listed. But in this scenario with all off the board, they go Malik Neighbors. A lot of teams have him as receiver one. The Cardinals could. I'm, I'm thinking the Cardinals is Marvin Harrison Jr., but we'll see. Um, and I feel like the Giants have a doomsday over Neighbors. It's just going to depend on the team. But just too good to pass. Add him with Kelvin Ridley and D-Hop. But again, D-Hop on a one-year deal so the titans take malik neighbors uh and the falcons i'm gonna go dallas turner back to dallas turner throughout this mo almost the whole process i was mocking turner and then recently i was kind of feeling quinian mitchell them going for a little bit of a surprise value in corner a little bit more than edge i could see but this one just makes too much sense to me this is your best pass rusher in the class he has super high upside 
it's a perfect fit for Raheem Morris's defense. I could see Mitchell, but it just makes too much sense. But that happens a lot. Like we say, this pick, this pick, that makes too much sense. And that team does something shocking. But another reason I decided to do this is the Falcons kind of did the right moves in the offseason. Like before the offseason even started, I'm like, Cousins is the ultimate fit for the Falcons. I'm like, Darnell Mooney just seems like a perfect fit. And they're going for those fits. Like they're going for the right, they're doing the right thing. Um, you, whether you think they overspent or not, they're going for the right type of players. So I'm going to say they do the right thing here. Um, kind of keep that going there and go Dallas Turner uh, at pick eight. Have another trade. I've had this. I had this one before, and of course the Bears could stay put. If one of those receivers drops, the Bears will stay put and take them. I think. But in this scenario, I don't have one of those receivers dropping. If I did, I had the Bears stay, staying put and taking them. But um, heard the Colts want to trade up. People are saying it's for a corner. I, I think Brock Bowers is a perfect fit for Shane Steichen's offense. That tight end that they need, it's just, it's perfect fit for Anthony Richardson. You know, tight ball as well. Just see him getting outside and Brock Bowers underneath and it, it, what he's after, what he's able to do after the catch. Um, I don't think they necessarily need another receiver, especially if they add a guy like Brock Bowers. I mean, they could draft the receiver later, but. Bears, it makes too much sense for the Bears to trade down. Of course, unless someone just, like an elite prospect is here, which is possible. There are scenarios where I've had receivers, one of those top three receivers here. But Bears only have four draft picks. Move back. You get a second round pick out of this, and that's a lot of value. So I threw something back to the Colts. Uh, but the 46 pick for the Bears, it makes a lot of sense here. So uh, they move back to 15. Uh, the Chargers move back to 10. They take J.C. Latham. It's funny, Latham is uh, is a guy I've mocked around this range and even higher for some time, and it's probably the one I got ripped for during this offseason in the comments, and it's sounding like he's going to go around this range. We'll wait and see. Uh, but a lot of people, a lot of smart people mocking the Chargers Latham at pick five. Um, you know, And I kind of saw it the whole way that it was a pretty good fit, good, at, good fit at right tackle. Hardball recruited him out of high school. He ended up going to Alabama. Um, but I think they can trade back a little bit and get him, and I think the Jets... Or a t it's just who's going to come up. Like people think the Vikings, but they may be able to wait for McCarthy in this scenario. Do they want to hop the Giants? I guess they maybe they feel like they have to. Um, you know, but I, I'm feeling the Chargers end up with Latham, whether it's 5 or 10. But I, 5 is a little early, even though I do like Latham. They could go neighbors there. They could go Joe Alt. There's a lot of people that are insisting it's going to be tackle. I think there's a shot its neighbors at five. I think they, you know, Harbaugh could have fooled us all with his, his hype on how important the offensive line is, and they can go neighbors and just – that's really what they should do because Herbert needs a goddamn weapon right now, you know, so we'll, we'll see. But they add an extra first next year in this deal, uh, just going back five spots, and they still get possibly their guy here in J.C. Latham. And the Vikings – Get McCarthy at 11, they very well can move up for him. I think they, option A is they really, really want to move up to three for Drake May uh, and take him, obviously. But can that get done? I almost mocked it here, didn't get it done. They may have to hop the Giants for McCarthy. I really don't think they're, they do that. I, I think when trading for 11 and 23, or for 23, they went, it's a top heavy draft. We got pretty good value. We'll get up there. So here's an option. We can use that to go up and get May. If we can't, we can stay put, get McCarthy and another first round pick. So, and then maybe option three is our, we have to trade up for McCarthy. So I think when they made that trade for 23, that was in their mind. It, ma it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so McCarthy 11 to the Vikings. This is more of his range. I, I would kind of like this pick. Wouldn't be in love with it. Would like it here at 11. If they trade up, I wouldn't really love it. I guess depending on what they had to give up. Uh, 12, I had the Eagles and the Broncos trading in my last mock. I did it again. This time it's actually for a different Alabama player. Uh, but it's Terry and Arnold, the Alabama corner. Uh, so the Eagles get 12. The Broncos get 22, 50, and 161. Makes a lot of sense because the Broncos could definitely use those picks. Uh, you know, so they could look to trade back unless someone's too good to pass on here. Eagles go up, hearing that they're a team that's really calling to move up. They do it, it feels like, every year, and they go get the big-time players that they love. Um, you know, and, and I actually, I'm hearing a specific player if they do this, and it's actually Quinion Mitchell. That's what everyone's saying right now. I'm going to go ahead and say it's the other corner. I'm going to say it's Terry and Arnold. It just feels more like a Howie uh, Roseman pick to me. Um, you know, Alabama, you know, big school guy, Alabama guy, um, you know, former solid recruit as well. 
I think he's the best corner in the class. Uh, pretty versatile as well. It, it just makes some sense to me. So the Eagles go up and get Arnold. They hop the Raiders for him. 13, the Raiders take Taliesa Fuaga. Uh, not a bold one at all. Pretty common of a pick. Uh, Raiders always surprise, though. They No matter who's in the front office, who's on the coaching staff, they surprise. A lot of people have them taking Michael Penix. I'm not seeing it, but they could do it. He has the arm talent, but he has injury concern, and he's already a little older. And, like, is it a firm, firm, complete upgrade with him? That's the question. Um, I think they can be. Like, I had the Jets as a sneaky team going up against all. I think, I think the Raiders could be a team like that as well, going up for a guy like all, but we'll see. Uh, 14, Alu Fashionu for the Saints. Pretty common pick as well. Like, everyone's pretty locked in with them taking a tackle. Like, if they were to surprise... I'd watch out for Byron Murphy if he was, if he was here, and he is here in this scenario actually. I, but I'm still he is here, and I'm still expecting tackle. But if they were to go non-tackle, that kind of would be my guess. But again, he could be off the board. So the Bears moved back. I think they could take Byron Murphy at nine. To be honest, I had that in my last mock, and I think that's a pretty solid pick. I love Byron Murphy the second from Texas. Uh, if, again, if they if one of those top receivers is there at nine and they stay put, they take one of those receivers because I don't think Keenan Allen's gonna be long, around for a long time. But uh, they they have a pretty good opportunity here. They only have four draft picks. They can get more draft picks. They get a second round pick here, uh, and they move back and they still get potentially their guy. I think that would be an A plus scenario for the Chicago Bears. Um, so that is what I have them doing. Again, I had that in the past, and hearing more and more that the Colts want to move up, I'm like, oh, that just makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense there. 16, this was funny because my last mock, I had this, and it was completely, I didn't hear a single thing about it. I Nobody else had it. Didn't hear anything about it. And I'm like, it just seems like a fit. It just seems like the Seahawks make some surprising picks. Um, this is a guy like Cooper DeGene's not just an outside corner. He, I think he's, his strengths point towards safety and nickel. But remember, Devin Witherspoon actually played a little bit more snaps in the inside than the outside. So they need another guy that can do those things because if he's in one spot, he needs him in the other spot. But also just a Mike McDonald guy where you can put him at safety, just put him where you need him most. Um, but like I said, it was funny that I ne- didn't hear anything and I mocked this, and now I see all kinds of people doing it. Thought that was funny. Um, so we'll see if it actually happens. But the Seahawks are a team that makes some surprises. Uh, this is maybe another bold thing. Uh, from this mock is I had Mitchell dropping a little bit uh, because I had the Eagles going off for Arnold. Of course, the Eagles could go up for Mitchell, and then Arnold could be here for the Jags. I definitely think the Jags would prefer Arnold over Mitchell. I've actually heard more teams prefer Mitchell over Arnold, uh, but I think the Eagles and the teams we're talking about, the Eagles and the Jags, I think they would be, I could be wrong, but I think they would be more Arnold guys, especially the Jags, but he's off the board. Maybe just too good to pass on Mitchell. The only knock about him is he doesn't press a lot and the Jags are going to want their corners to press. So it's just too good to pass though with his upside. And they like traits. Spalky likes traits. Um, Mitchell has those. I really consider Xavier worthy, right? Fresh off the combine. When I heard worthy could be receiver four uh, and the type player he is, I'm like, I mocked it. I was like, I could see Doug Peterson wanting Xavier Worthy. There's some talk about them wanting to trade up for possibly a receiver. So could they take him there? It would surprise a lot of people. I almost did it. I was 50-50. It's just Mitchell's still here. They need a corner. Uh, tough to pass. Bengals are going to go Liatu. Latu is one of the tougher guys to mock because the med- he medically retired a few years ago because of the neck injury. Uh, but he's been playing, obviously, at a high level recently. Some teams think he's all right. Some teams don't. Hearing lately, most teams think he's okay. So he could go a little bit earlier. But kind of split the difference here. He's in the middle. Uh, Bengals may trade Trey Hendrickson. We'll see. I mean, he requested a trade. doesn't mean they'll actually trade him. But... Um, yeah, they have a lot of they got to save some money for the, for extensions in the future as well. So will they extend Tim? Give him what he wants. We'll see. But here's a really good fit, and they did draft Miles Murphy, and I actually like that fit. I think he has a lot of upside, uh, but it does they like having a rotation? And this is a really good fit. It just feels like a good Hendrickson replacement, and he's still on the board. So that's what I went with here. But um, I strongly consider Tyler Guyton. I think Tyler Guyton was a big riser for me recently. Um, and I think he is, it sounds like he is for NFL teams as well. He's got a lot of upside. I think that'd be a pretty good fit at right tackle for the future. So I, it was kind of 50, 50 for a lot and Guyton, uh, Rams get Troy Fatanu, who could actually go a lot earlier. He's a pretty big range. Could go to 10 at 10 or down here. I think 20 is probably the latest, but I probably, probably doesn't get by the Rams to be honest. 
Uh, really, really good fit uh, for them, and they could be looking for a left tackle here. So, uh, But he could drop a little bit because there's some, some teams have some concerns about his knee long term. We'll see what happens during the draft. Uh, 20, Graham Barton. I've been mocking this quite a bit. Uh, a guy that can play every position on the offensive line. Probably starts at center for them, uh, but could help them, again, in multiple spots. Uh, 21, I had this trade last time as well. The Cardinals have a pack, you know, a load of picks, so they could uh, package some or one and move up and get a, get a guy they really like. So they got to hop other teams and make sure they get Jared Verse here, a pass rusher. Um, that they definitely could use the Dolphins pick up pick 90. The Dolphins are definitely a trade back team because they they need some day two picks. They need more picks here. They could actually get more than just 90. I really thought about adding more on top of that. Uh, 22, so a little bit of a surprise. I think the Broncos are realistic to trade back, but they definitely need a receiver. They traded Jerry Judy. Obviously, they'd signed Josh Reynolds. That's not like a huge answer, especially long term. Um, there's some Cortland Sutton trade rumors. They said they're not going to trade him, but I don't think they would just come out and say that, especially if they're targeting receivers in the draft. Um, so they could move Sutton. And here you have a freaky, big body, speedy, lengthy receiver. I just Sean Payton, I think, would really, really like here. Um, and too good to pass, in my opinion. So that's something Payton would do. I think if they can get their hands on lot two down here, maybe they go that route. But he's off the board, and I think 12's too early with his injury concern. Um, just a feeling. They go they go in a receiver. Could they go Xavier Worthy? I think they're more likely to go Brian Thomas Jr. 23, here's another surprise, just something I'm feeling. If the Vikings keep 23, they might not even have 23. So he might as well go bold here. But Marshawn Neeland is a guy, maybe one of my biggest risers over the last month, you know, couple weeks at least, a few weeks leading up to the draft. Ton of upside, um, you know, really a powerful, but moves like a, like an undersized pass rusher, which is good. Like how quick he is, um, you know, it just feels like a, I feel like he could sneak in the first one, and it feels like a Flores type guy. And I've noticed the Vikings have met with him on several different occasions. So the Western Michigan star could be sneaking in the first round if the Vikings and the Vikings. I keep hearing they're hesitant to trade twenty three. So what does that tell me? They would rather trade a next year first or future first instead of giving up 23, and they trade it for 23. They are targeting somebody specific, and why would they do that? You know, unless they know they can get somebody. So it's got to be someone they know they can get. Um, I'm feeling that one. If they keep pick 23, it could be Chop Robinson. It could be a corner. Uh, it could be Newton. Something about Neilan. 24 Cowboys go with Tyler Guyton, a big riser for me. So I think this is the lowest he goes, and the Cowboys would love him. Um, so, yeah, I, I just a recent riser for me and based on what I'm hearing. So, Bengals could take him at 18. He lit up the senior bowl. He was the, the center of attention there for a reason. So, probably the latest he goes. I do like to fit with the Cowboys. I heard they like him very much. Packers are tough to mock, if I'm being honest. Like, they, some talk about O-line. I really don't see them taking a tackle. People think that. It would surprise me. I like their good young tackle duo. I guess it's not 100% proven, but and Andre Dillard's a decent backup. I know he was bad last year, but he's a decent backup for the Packers, um, you know, in their scheme and how they coach. Um, they could go D-line. I thought about Newton here. I thought about the other corners like Nate Wiggins, Max Melton. I'm going to go Kool-Aid and McKinstry. Uh, his ability to press and play man coverage while pressing – Sets him over the top for in the Green Bay Packers eyes in my prediction here. So that is what I went with. Um, 26 chop Robinson. Uh, th I would love this really good value steal for the Buccaneers explosive get off um, bucks. Yeah. What, what are they going to do here? Like, I think they would like to but he's well off the board long off the board. They could go old line. They could even trade back early second pick there. Um, so I had the same thing as I had last draft. I had the Dolphins moving back and getting a guy that just kind of has Mike McDaniel and uh, Dolphins written all over him with his speed. I mean, they have had in costly injuries, even though not, they're not full, not even close to full season uh, last year at least. Again, they're costly. They're 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 struggling with. They don't have Tyree Kill or Jalen Waddle on the most important part of their offense. Um, you know, and Tyree Kill, it's kind of he's kind of made it clear that he's not going to be around for as long as you think or forever. So. Getting another guy, you know, that kind of fits what they do there it makes some sense. And he Worthy's getting a lot of buzz. He could be the fourth receiver taken or the fifth. I, I think there's a guy, you know, I, I think there's definitely five guys better than Worthy, but I would actually surprise if he's not a top five receiver taken just based on the chatter right now. So uh, we will see. And kind of a boomer bust guy there. Uh, here we go. 
We're gonna go. We're gonna go big. We're gonna go super bold here. Uh, this, if you've been watching, I keep giving the Bills like a too obvious pick, but at the same time, I say, God, I feel like the Bills are gonna do something that no one's expecting. Whether it's take non-receiver or go to surprising receiver or make a splash trade, I keep saying Roma Dunze is a per- the most perfect fit in this entire draft is Roma Dunze and the Buffalo Bills. But can they actually pull it off? A little tricky. Uh, he would have to start sliding. But so I'm gonna. Cut it out and just go with my gut and say that they do do something surprising. Uh, I talked about Dunze being a really good fit. I think Troy Franklin is a phenomenal fit to try to replace Stephon Diggs. He is a he is he's a boomer bust guy. He is really really good tracking down the field. Like he makes some tough catches. Um, you know, even with contact down the field, he'll drop some simple ones. That's kind of his issue. Um, but he gets open. He's a good boundary guy. He makes plays down the field. I just see him replacing Diggs. I see him like more of a Chris Olave type player, um, but that could replace Diggs. And I just Josh Allen fit, like fit for Josh Allen ball here. They met with him several different times. Uh, Doesn't mean everything. Some teams use that as smoke, like, hey, we might take this guy. Other teams go trade up and get him. Makes sense. I'm just feeling it. If Brian Thomas Jr. was still on the board here, I would go Brian Thomas Jr. He's not on the board. I have him going 22. So I'm watching out for Troy Franklin, which I think teams are going to be all over the place on. Some teams late first grade, some teams even third round grade. Um, His highs are super high. His lows are a little low, but he's been growing on me lately. I I wouldn't mind this pick, really. 29, I'm one with a lot of bold ones, but I've been a Max Mountain guy. I think he sneaks in the first round. Um, I've had people close to him actually tell me some things too, but uh, that I wasn't allowed to say, but... uh, I think it doesn't mean everything, you know, happens all the time. He very well, chances are he probably goes early second, probably goes early second, but just a gut feeling here. He finds his way in the back of the first. I love, I love his game. I think teams will see that, um, I, you know, he's got the traits for sure. Just feels like a Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, Aaron Glenn type guy, Holmes guy, because the traits, the upside, the flashiness, Campbell, uh, because he's a knee biter type corner, and there's not too many of them in this draft. And Glenn, I think, because of that too, him being having a defensive back background and him liking playmakers with length. Boom! I it just it just makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's bold. I'm aware. We'll see what happens here. Um, but got the line. I really thought about Nate Wiggins too, but I really thought about Darius Robinson. I think you know I had Nealon going already. I think they could be another team for Nealon, who I just really think is going to go in the first all of a sudden. It's going to be fun. We'll see what happens. I mocked this a ton. He could go b- before this. Like I said, I had the Cowboys taken Guyton, but I said Guyton could go earlier. If he goes earlier, the Cowboys could take Mims, and then what do the Ravens do? If Mims is off the board, they could surprise a little bit and go Nate Wiggins here. Uh, no one's really expecting corner, but they can go Nate Wiggins. They could go receive. They can go Mitchell, Adam A. Mitchell for sure. If Worthy's there, they can go him. Um, another team, if you know Nealon or Darius Robinson are there, um, so I, I could actually see multiple scenarios if Mims is not there. That, that makes some sense. The ones I just rattled off there. Uh, then 31, uh, maybe a little bold again. Like if uh, IU trades seeming a little bit more possible, I think we would see what the Niners, they want a first round pick and they should get a first round pick, but I don't know if they will. So that, like if they're on the clock, they're like, you know, what do we do here? Like it's going to be a little tricky. Mitchell's still there. I think if there was going to be an IU replacement, I, I think Mitchell would be the guy. Um, so I guess that's a little bold too. He's just tough to mock. Some teams concerned because he's diabetic. To me, that I don't know the full details. To me, that you know is not the most concerning thing uh, if he can play football or not. But so he could slide a little bit. I mean, he's so good that he can go a lot earlier. Like drawing some CD Lamb comparisons, I don't really see that. I think he moves like him, but Lamb. Lamb's just much better, but Lamb dominates the slot. I don't really see Mitchell playing much in the slot, and Lamb dominates the outside as well. Um, but I, I could understand where people come up with it, you know. Um, so he could go a lot earlier because he's worthy of a lot earlier pick if everything checks out medically or health-wise, I suppose. And then Jordan Morgan, who could go earlier or could go early second. I think the commanders could try to trade up for him. Uh, the Chiefs thought about receiver here. If, if Mitchell or the two Texas receivers, if they're here, uh, they could they could take him. Uh, those guys, but man, thinking about it, I think left tackle is more of a need and it's not all about need, but left tackle is more of a need than receiver to them. And they've, they've hit on receivers in the second, third, whatever round. So 
Um, I, they may be more likely to go this route. You got a really good pass protecting quick left tackle here uh, that I think is only getting better. And, and it's uh, so he needs a pass first team, and you got one here in the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, you're welcome, Panthers fans. I got a Panthers pick as well. Xavier Leggett. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if like Mitchell's on the board. They probably go him if Troy Franklin's on the board. Battle between Franklin or Leggett. They've met with Leggett several times. Again, meetings could just be smoke, a smoke plan for teams or strategy. Uh, but I think they'll like Leggett. There's a lot of receivers that are pretty damn similar to Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen. So do they avoid those types of guys? I don't know why I'm moving my body so much for this one. Um, so I like it, kind of a do-it-all guy. Put him on the outside, he'll be physical at the point of the catch, and he's really good after the catch. You could run some gadget plays with him. Um, I don't know, Thielen, Thielen, they kind of ran some of those. You know, some, a lot of screen passes, so you don't, you can quit it with the old man there, even though he could still play. Um, John, Johnson can work the you know the middle of the field, and then you get a guy that you can run downfield, like boundary plays with, and kind of gadget plays with. So I guess it does make some sense. So there you go. Um bold picks everywhere I, I usually regret not going bold more bold um you know in my final mock because the draft's just like kind of looking back to last year like no one really thought that this that you know so everyone's mocks are going to be a disaster and i love it because i love the surprises it'd be boring as shit if everything went exactly to plan um you know so I, i'm pumped i'm pumped can't wait for our live stream tonight so join us very important to follow us on twitter for day two and three uh but that will do it. Stay tuned for our winners, losers, grades videos each day for the NFL draft as well. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.